All right. Uh, well, it didn't work. The bid to get those electors to uh, flip uh, their preferences and maybe get 37 of them together to deny Donald Trump the presidency didn't work. Now, of course, nothing is signed, sealed, delivered, and done until January 6th when all of this is stamped and done in Congress. But for now, it looks very, very unlikely. And six weeks after he was duly elected president of the United States, it looks like, indeed, Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. To the Daily Caller's Vince Colonnese, former John McCain press secretary Sarah Lenti, and Democratic strategist Chrissy Setzer. Um, Chrissy, anyway, do you begin with you? Um, obviously, you're bummed out, I'm sure. But uh, how, how do you feel about <laughs> You sound really uh, sincere about that, Neil. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But how, how do you feel about many liberals, Democrats, whatever, who are frustrated and just cannot move on? Is it time to move on now? Uh, listen, I certainly understand the frustration and the um, unwillingness to move on when we have, for the second time in the course of five elections, seen uh, the Republican candidate get, in this case, almost three million less fewer votes than Hillary Clinton and ultimately be the person who's going to take office. So that's one reason that they well, can be Well, it would have been a different upset. race if they were just campaigning on the basis of who got the popular vote, right? The whole thing was about the electoral vote. Right? So we uh, don't yeah, know yeah. what it would have been like, right? The, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. right. But, um, well, you but, mentioned so that's, it that's anyway, though. You had to mention but it anyway. I, yeah, but I think, but yeah, well, of course, because okay, it's sure. important that three million fewer Absolutely. people. But the bigger thing, I think the bigger issue is that, look, we had foreign interference in our election. That's been confirmed by our CIA, by the FBI, and by Russia, who's not exactly but our But are you, friend, are you convinced, because right? some of your so, colleagues are convinced that yeah. that is what influenced the election to the point of flipping it? Are you? I think it's certainly a factor, absolutely. Is it the no, no, only not factor? A factor? No, They're saying it's that, not. that when I had likes of... You yeah. know, Christine Pelosi and all those others here, they were saying, no, it, it flipped the election. I thought, that's, you don't know. But we don't know, and that's the point, right? right? I mean, that's exactly the point, is that we don't know what might have actually installed no, we don't. Donald so it's Trump time to move as on. president. So we have to well, move on. Well, mm, that's, yeah, that's definitely mm, not okay. how I feel. Well, yeah. All right, fine. <laughs> Sarah, what do you make of that? Well, the president-elect on November 9th said, I'm sorry, the president, President Obama, welcomed the president-elect into the office that he's about to assume, was gracious about it, and hoped that, said that he hoped he did well um, in office. I think right now, in, in terms of the Russian hacking, was not a decisive factor in this election. People were voting that. on the, I would say that people were voting on economic issues. They were voting on a pandemic of terrorist attacks that they've seen for the last eight years, and uh, increasingly so. Um, and, and so Russian and the Chinese have been hacking our system for years and how did that how did that flip our election that's, well, that's we don't the know question. but then Vince, Vince, all I can see is that you've got to be a pretty bad candidate or your message is falling on deaf ears if you can't be Donald Trump with all the controversies and the tapes that came out and everything else that was out there where almost every consensus view not on this show by the way but was that uh, you know Hillary Clinton would win this in a laugher um, so this is the second big election she was heavily favored to win that she lost. So I'm wondering yes. where the soul searching is there, at least on the part of Hillary Clinton. I know her husband was blaming James Comey. Harry Reid is blaming James Comey. Are there others who are blaming the solar eclipse? I have no idea. But you do have to get to a point to say maybe it was our message. Right. I, well, there's not a lot of introspection coming out of Hillary Clinton. It's all extrospection. It's looking at what are all the outside factors that contributed to my loss, as you just noted, whether it's Russia, whether it's WikiLeaks, whether it's just all or Comey, but Vince, you know, all these other people that are the only blame. ones who play these games. Eight years ago, I can remember Republicans doing much the same. Oh, if not for the meltdown. Yeah. Oh, if John McCain were a better candidate. I know how this goes, so I'm not trying to take umbrage on either side here, but there does come a point, and this is pretty late in the cycle, where you have to just accept reality and move on. Right, but at this point, there's still claims that this was a rigged election. I guess the, the argument in the, in the Russia case, whether or not it affected the election results ultimately, is that if only the voters had known less information, it would have changed the nature of the election. And in this case of 538 electors, where you have efforts to try and get them to actually overturn the results of the election, which is stronger? It would seem to me that trying to convince 538 people to overturn the results of a, of a proper election in the United States is probably a greater effort to undermine democracy than anything Russia did by way of releasing information. Well, wow. yeah, Sarah, maybe help me out with this. I mean, what do Republicans do to avoid the arrogance thing? By that, I mean any party that comes, especially with a sweep or, or running the table in, that, in the case of getting the House and the Senate and the White House, 
you can get a little cocky. You can get a lot done. You could do it without the other side. But as we learn in the case of Obama and the Democrats, when they first came to power, they did get a lot done. Maybe not exactly the cup of tea that was wanted by, by Republicans, but they got a lot done. But it comes back to bite you if you get a little too cocky there. How do Republicans avoid that? Uh, what do you think they do now to work with the other side? Or do they even bother? No, I think arrogance is an awful thing when entering office. I think President uh, elect Trump has been um, showing by folding in Democrats, having them come to the Trump Tower. I think that when he enters office, um, reaching out to Democrats, senators, and governors, and House representatives is going to be very important to taking their counsel. Um, I, I think that's one of the best things he can do. Uh, and I think even the cabinet secretaries to think very hard. You know, you can think about Scott Pruitt, who's entering the EPA um, with 15,000 employees that probably are hostile to, to him. So what are you going to do to assuage their worries and to let them know that you're going to work together? Uh, so I think every the president-elect and all of his cabinet secretaries should think very hard about how they're messaging to Democrats and the entire United both States. Sides. No, no I, I agree with you there. Uh, Christy, the one thing that comes to mind is I don't think that Donald Trump is going to have as much a problem with Democrats as he might the so-called establishment within his own party. By that I mean Mitch McConnell, the way he's talked about dialing back the tax cuts so that they're revenue neutral. Uh, some supply siders wince when they hear that kind of talk. Others saying an infrastructure measure is going to go nowhere fast. That is yeah. within the Republican establishment. So I'm wondering, given the odd nature of the whole Trump candidacy and now presidency to come, he might have more resistance from those in his own party. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, you might think that given that uh, there are just so many issues on which um, Trump's position is anathema to Republican Party um, politics. But, um, but we just haven't seen that yet. We just haven't seen Republicans um, in leadership being willing to take a stance against him on on anything yet. I mean, Mitch McConnell has even said that, no, he would not he hold a hearing on Russian interference into our election. I mean, look, that, that really should not be a partisan issue. That should be I something that I thought he did. I thought, he, was, I thought he had gotten around he to that. He said Senate mm. Intelligence. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. I, I had heard that he was See, it not. It sounds like you're still that. a hater, Christy. Okay. This is the season I'm, I'm of love. I'm definitely still a hater. And, and hugs. <laughs> this is the season of hugs. Can any of you guys envision this market? I know you're not market soothsayers, but you're pretty good guts, each and every one of you, uh, getting ahead of itself, looking for nirvana here, 38 points away from 20,000, mm -hmm. buying on the rumor of a Trump presidency coming to pass, and then selling once it happens. Vince, what do you think? I mean, it seems totally unclear to me. At this point, uh, all of the predictions about the market and Trump's impact on it have been wrong. True. I mean, at least the predictions were uh, the liberal, liberal media and mainstream media in general predicted m market chaos with a Trump presidency. The very election of Trump has sent a strong signal to the markets that it's, uh, time, for, it's time for a, a, good, a good experience. So you think and this could hold? You think this could hold? Yeah, I do. I do okay. think it can hold. Sarah, yeah. what about you? I think it will hold. I think my investor would say continue to invest. Okay. Christy, what about you? I, I know you're really enthusiastic about what, what you have to look forward to here. I just want to... Right. Get no, I mean, started. look, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll hold for, for the moment. But as you said, once he actually takes office and starts doing things that um, are going to show that he could potentially destabilize us again, then that's not going to hold.